Hey, it's Pete. Welcome to today's episode of Stock Trading Pro. Today, we're going to talk about something that drives traders crazy in the stock market, which is a short covering rally that appears to just come out of nowhere. You put on that short sell, you're expecting it to go down. Everything lines up perfectly. And in a heartbeat, that thing rockets back in the other direction in your face. Well, what if I told you that there's a way of seeing a short covering rally and knowing when you should expect it to happen, how to be prepared for it, and more importantly, how to profit from it in the other direction. So this is a snip from a recent coaching call. It's roughly nine minutes. Take a lot of notes. If you have any follow-up questions, definitely leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. So this is all about a short covering rally and how to see it before it happens. Enjoy the video. We work straight up looking for follow through to the downside today, but I think Twitter today is probably the poster child. Uh, if you didn't happen to hear me going crazy a little bit about this today, um, I was talking about, uh, I guess crazy is relative, but I was talking about crazier than I normally am. I was talking about this here today um, and you know, a lot of conversations about how Twitter traded last week and into the end of the week. But we ended up having um, this level right here. <laughs> and I can't even draw it. That's how tight it is. Where if you look on the daily chart, it's an obvious breakdown level where big selling day on Thursday, looking for this thing to take out these lows. And then most likely uh, the Elon Musk conversations work their way out of the universe and the stock gets back to where it was, right? So that's a mental mindset, you know, it's the mindset of going into the day and you're like, okay, this thing breaks down. I got this level all mapped out and everything. Lo and behold, and I trust you, this is not random. No way in the world is this random where the low here, which is the breakdown is 44.44. And the breakdown over here, it takes out that low by eight cents, which not a lot, but certainly takes it out. And the move that we had higher after taking out that low by eight cents, which is here, here, this was just what in God's green earth is going on right now if you're inexperienced. But this is what I was trying to walk through everybody today, that there are certain levels of price action that you need to know. And, and that's not difficult. And we just really looked at the daily chart and saying, wow, there's the Grand Canyon below this thing. If it falls got a lot of room to go but if it breaks it and does not follow through watch your tail <laughs> watch your tail because that thing could go pretty hard in the other direction because that's essentially they trapped the short sellers and they shoved it right they shoved that if you remember james cagney movie they just shoved that lemon right in your face and you're like what in the world just went on and if you were aware of that, you know, we, we, look, we said, don't buy it, don't short the lows, but we were looking to short here. If you remember, we called out this, we said, wait for a bearish U-turn. They just squeezed the shorts, took it out by eight cents, looking for a bearish U-turn at the opening price. And we literally got it exactly at the opening price. And we were fully expecting this thing to boom, head back down, like, oh, great. Got out this, got the shorts out of the way. And we're going to head back down. We said this bearish U-turn looking for an entry, which means it needs to trade below that bearish U-turn. Fortunately for us at that point, it did not. <laughs> and we didn't get caught in this rest of this move to the upside during the day. So I want to make sure that when I notice those kind of things intraday, even though I was talking about them on the audio during the day, that I recap them very specifically, which we have a couple of good questions tonight about stop losses. That's exactly why. OK, when we talk about the question tonight about stop losses, that's exactly why you need to know what is a normal move for the stock. You need to know if one side of the market is going to get caught, what does that look like and what is the likely to happen after that? This one was so perfectly set up that they they didn't break it by a dollar. They broke it by eight cents. And when I say they, I'm talking about there weren't enough short sellers with money to keep it below that level. And the algorithms came right back in and bought it right at the lows after it came right back. So this took it out, came right back and went well bid. As soon as that candle went well bid, instead of following through to the downside, it's just one of those things where you're sliding on black ice on you know wherever you live and it's the winter and you're like, oh, please don't let me hit a car. That's all you're saying to yourself because you know, you know you got caught. 
So I wanted to, I hope everybody can watch that part of the video again, because you should be able to now apply that to a lot of different stocks that you happen to be watching, not for gimmicks, not for like, oh, where are the algo is going to get me, as much as where are obvious levels that should hold. And if they do, I can trade with conviction. But if that obvious level does not hold and continue, you better be on top of that because you can caught in this and in a $50, $40 stock, you can have a lot of size. It's not that hard to have 3000 shares of this stock. You get caught on the wrong side of this thing. One trade can wipe out your entire month simply because you're not aware of the bigger picture of this thing taking you right out by that level and you get caught and you're like, oh man, <laughs> it just goes back in the other direction. So I thought that was kind of cool to be talking about the Twitter trade. I, I actually, during the day on audio, I literally said those SOBs took out the low by eight cents and then it never looked back. And again, we were looking to short this because even this was a pretty big rally. This is, you know, 44, 42, even back to the opening price. That's almost $2. That's not a short, short, short covering rally. It's still $2. And I felt pretty confident here that this bearish U-turn was going to see the thing roll over. But thankfully, now it didn't roll over and nothing to do there. But um, I want to challenge you to notice a little bit more. I want to challenge you to just make a little bit more of a distinction that, OK, I'm looking to short NVIDIA. We keep talking about this 214 level. And Pete keeps saying bearish gap, bearish gap, bearish U-turn, bearish U-turn. This sucker needs to go down, right? And then you game plan yesterday's low. You're like, okay, if this sucker breaks yesterday's low, I'm shorting that baby. Everything's lining up. Bearish gap, bearish gap, bearish U-turn, bearish U-turn. Uh, excuse me, even, even more bearish engulfing candlestick. This thing breaks that level. We're off to the races. I'm going to show everybody I know how to make money short selling stocks. I can't wait to tell everybody at the barbecue this weekend. Well, what does it do? Breaks that level by a few cents comes right back in and shoves it in your face. I am not saying short selling that level was wrong. As a matter of fact, it was, it was good. That's not the issue. The issue is not acknowledging the significance of the support over time and saying to yourself, this short sell is a good idea. We came into the day looking for tech stocks to take a hit. This stock completely reversed on Thursday into a bearish engulfing candlestick, closed on the low, closed right at the support level. You bet your bippy, I'm going to short this thing today. Okay? So short selling it was not a wrong decision. As a matter of fact, I'll turn that around. It was actually a good decision. What was poor trading is if you didn't acknowledge the significance of that support level for the same reason you acknowledge that if it breaks down, this is a big level and it could be a home run trade, but you didn't mentally prepare for the other side of the trade, which is if this breaks down and does not follow through, the odds of a short covering move in the other direction are pretty good. And that's exactly what we got. So as much as trading experience is about understanding perfect and when to size up and when to hold longer, avoiding these situations or being, better way to say it is being prepared for both sides of this trade will make you a winner quicker because you're not milking a bad trade that was a day trade you are now turning into a swing trade because you got caught, didn't get out, and now you're holding it. And these reversals, they can, they can go on for three to five days, if not longer, simply because it's that obvious. So you have short sellers that got out of it. And now if this thing goes well bid again tomorrow on a level where it should have broke down, the shorts are going to be screwed. And it would not shock me if this happens again, which is what happened at this level, happened at this level, happened at this level. I mean, you can see it just didn't go down. So the conservative trade is to wait for the first pause below this level, or at the very least, the first close, but that's for a different conversation. I just want to make sure that you are aware that you need to be aware of where would somebody really be caught off guard? Where would this really invalidate that idea?
which kind of ties into some of the stop loss conversations that we had today. So both of those ideas, NVIDIA um, and Twitter that we just looked at, just really advanced stuff that's not complicated, but sometimes we just need to have the conversation around it so that you're looking at it and you're like, you know, even here, you know, yeah, nice breakout, but it came right back in. Don't get caught.